Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video I'm going to use Z-Spheres to create a spooky tree. Okay, let's get into it. First things first, I'm going to press comma on the keyboard and bring up my lightbox. And under Projects, I've got the Z-Sphere project, zsphere.zpr, and I'm just going to double click that to load it up. No, I don't want to save changes. Okay, here it is. You'll see that when I've opened mine up, I now have two circles when I move my cursor across the z-sphere. And that is obviously because I have symmetry on. If I press X on the keyboard, it'll deactivate the symmetry. Now it's just showing me where I will place that circle or that z-sphere. And you can see right now that the top of this root z-sphere, as it's called, is dark red, meaning that's the up direction. So good to know. And so what we're going to do is click and drag and create attached z-spheres that uh, are going to extend up for this tree so you can see around the top here i'm just going to click and drag and this is kind of like the trunk of the tree and so i'll get it so that it's just about the same size maybe a little bit smaller than the first z-sphere or the parent z-sphere that is the root z-sphere and that's looking okay if i rotate around yeah i'm pretty happy with that what how's this going to look as a mesh well if we press a we can preview the adaptive skin and the top's looking nice and voluminous here, but we're getting this weird artifact at the bottom. And this is because the root, the root z-sphere doesn't actually have volume. And so we just need to create a z-sphere at the bottom as the base of our z-sphere tree. So I'll press A to return to the z-spheres away from the adaptive skin. And I will just click and drag at the bottom here to create another z-sphere. And now if I press A to preview the z-sphere, I've got a nice capsule and that looks somewhat like a tree trunk. I'm happy with that. I'll press A to return back to the z-spheres. And I'd like maybe this bottom to be a little bit broader. So what I can do is scale this up. But right now, just be aware that I'm currently in draw mode. And if I want to scale this up, I will go and press E on the keyboard. And I'm no longer in draw mode, so I can't create z-spheres but I can go ahead and scale this one up and say, yeah, that's um, looking about the right thickness. Great. Now it's kind of gone a little bit wonky or skew if there. So I'd like to move it. So I'm going to press W on the keyboard. And now I can kind of come over to about the center of that one and just click and drag to move it how I like it. That's looking pretty good. Maybe I shimmy it a little bit that way. And it's looking, I like it overall. All right, great. So I'm gonna, I want to create more z-spheres, so I'll press Q on the keyboard or come over and activate my draw. And up here, I'm going to say, yeah, let's uh, click and drag and create another z-sphere. And, you know, maybe I don't like this z-sphere. I've just messed it up. So you can see this little inner circle here. If I hold the Alt key, you can see it comes up with a little minus symbol. And I can click on that circle to remove that z-sphere and say, no, I should just bring this um, existing z-sphere up. So I'll just press W on the keyboard and just kind of drag it up. Ah, much better. Now, next thing I want to do is I'd like to create two branches that come off this, this trunk z-sphere. So what I'm going to do is turn on my draw and press X to activate my symmetry. And you can see that right now, if I move my cursor over, I have these two red circles indicating that two separate z-spheres will be created. But if I bring them together towards the line of symmetry, they'll snap together into one green one and only one z-sphere will be created, one child z-sphere of this parent z-sphere. So I want to make two child z-spheres. So I'm going to make sure that they're far enough away and then click and drag. And that's looking quite good, except that they're a little bit too close. So I want these to really be branches that are branching out. So I'll press W on the keyboard and then click and drag to bring these out. Okay, it's looking quite good, except they're a little bit too thick here. So I want to scale them down. So I'm gonna press E on the keyboard and scale these down just like so. Next thing I'd like to do is to create two new branches that are just going basically straight up. And I'd like them to be the same size, you know, um, just to see how it looks as this Z-sphere. So what I can do is I can click, oh, I need to make sure I'm in draw mode. Click draw mode or press Q. And now I'm going to click and press shift. And as soon as I do that, you can see that it creates a z-sphere that's the same size as the parent z-sphere that it's being spawned from. And if I hold control as well as shift, I can actually extend it up. So again, that combination is clicking, pressing shift and pressing control and allows you to extend it up. Now I'm looking at that and it's looking a little unnatural. Um, you know, it, it really should taper a bit. So I might press E 
to have that just go ahead and, and scale that down a little bit. So I've got a little bit smaller diameter at that child's e-sphere. Okay, that's looking, that's looking pretty cool. And uh, I really just wanna, I just wanna get this into a, a mesh and start um, sculpting. So a couple other things, I could create some roots or some additional uh, branches here. And I'm just gonna look at another way that we can do that. But first we need to get this to be a mesh, a poly mesh. And if we go up here, scroll up, let's close this. We can see right now that we want to make this into a poly mesh 3D. And to do that, I need to press A to see the adaptive skin preview. And then I can click on make poly mesh 3D. Fantastic. And I was talking about making additional branches. So a really good way to do that is to press B on the keyboard and use this snake hook brush. And then I can just go to an area where I like a new branch and kind of go to town. So maybe I'll have it like so. And drag this out. And I'd like to have a, a root system as well. So I'll click and drag and got some, maybe I need to make this a little bit larger down here. So I'll increase the draw size and click and drag this one out. Yeah, that's good. Now I'd like to have one at the front here as well. And you can see if I, if I do it with symmetry on, I can kind of get some weird results. So I'll press X to turn off symmetry and then also create a root out the back. So you can be a little bit more discerning than this. Now we'll notice that uh, obviously plenty of touch up that can be done here, but this glaring issue here is these really stretched out polygons. If I press shift F, I can see just how sliced up they are compared to these other ones. So I want to have a uniform polygons, just like the trunk here. And I can do that by coming over to my palettes and under geometry, I'll open that one up and come down to Dynamesh. Sometimes this is closed up like so, I'll open that one up. And you can see by default it has blur, so I'll turn the blur off. And the the resolution, well, that depends on how big this actual object is in your scene. So you just have to press the Dynamesh and see how it looks. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it at a resolution of 128 right now. And I'll press Shift F to go back to seeing my model. I'm going to say, all right, I'd like to add a little bit more volume to these branches at the back here. And I can do that quite easily by switching my brush to an inflate. So to access the inflate brush, I can press BIN or press B on the keyboard and come down to inflate. And I want to reduce the size of my brush at the moment, it's too big. Uh, it goes a bit crazy if I do it. So I'm gonna press S and hold on the keyboard and just drag the size of it down. Nice, now I can just go and have something a little bit more restrained. I'm gonna undo that because I didn't have symmetry on, so I'll press X and try that again. That looks quite good. Nice bit lumpy, bit Halloween-y. And I'd like to maybe do that on this branch here as well. And then go and say, all right, I need to smooth these a little bit. So I'll hold shift and just get them how I like them. Okay. Now you can see I'm, I really need to inflate these. And even if I press smooth, it doesn't kind of work because it just smooths too quickly. So I could reduce the, the strength of my suit smooth. But what I'm going to do instead, control Z, and then I'm going to remesh this. So you can see right now I've got some big polygons as well. So I wanna avoid that. So I'm gonna click and hold control and then click and drag with my left mouse button to actually remesh this or redynamesh this at these settings. And now I have additional polygon detail here and I can press shift F and I can just go in and you can see my actual smooth tool isn't quite as aggressive anymore because there's more polygonal detail there. All right, it's the same here on this limb. Great, more control. And um, to, to finish this one off, I'm going to go and just take some eyes out and a mouth. So I want to use a clay brush. So, or the clay buildup. So I'll press B, C, B as the shortcut, or press B on the keyboard as I am now. And you can see clay buildup. This is a fantastic brush. I'll go and uh, adjust my brush size by pressing S on the keyboard and holding it and setting it to the value that I like. And then uh, just come in here with my symmetry on, pressing X if I don't have it on already. And I'm gonna hold the Alt key to subtract from the tree. And there we go, looking quite diabolical and uh, very unhappy. So the downward turned mouth. Okay, uh, if I want to take this further, uh, then I'll just continue sculpting. But I'll leave it there 
And I hope that helps, and I'll see you in another video.